Hello everyone. Again, welcome to Learn with Lakhnani. I am Prasan Kumar Lakhnani. Here with I am going to explain the next part of NumPy. So in the previous uh, videos, I taught what is a NumPy, what is the importance of NumPy, and uh, what are the different ways of creating the NumPy, one dimensional array, two dimensional array, three dimensional array, and the slicing operations on the NumPy array. So if you have not watched the previous videos, please subscribe to my channel and also please watch the previous videos to get the basic knowledge about the NumPy. So in this lecture, in this uh, video, I am going to explain the various ways of creating the NumPy array. So in the previous videos, we have created the NumPy array only by using the array method which is available in the NumPy class. But the not only the array, we have so many methods which are available in order to create the ND array or you can call as NumPy array in NumPy. So in this session, I will completely explain the various ways of creating the NumPy array. Please watch, please subscribe to my channel, learn with like many. So as I told, there are different ways of creating NumPy array, not only with the array method. So here I am going to explain the different ways of creating the NumPy array. Suppose if you take, uh, if you want to create uh, the NumPy array, there are so many easy ways of creating the NumPy array. Either you can create uh, uh, one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional or any dimension you can create easily with the help of uh, some other methods available in the NumPy package. So here array, this is already we have seen how to create uh, the, element, the uh, NumPy array with the array concept. One is array. This is already we have seen in the previous classes how to create the NumPy arrays with the array. Next one is A range. There is a method called as A range in NumPy. Through with this A range, we can create NumPy arrays of any shape. Lin space. It is also another method to create NumPy arrays. Zeros, ones, full, i, identity, dag, diagonal, diagonal empty and also we have another special module called as numpy.random.module in this numpy.random.module again we have different methods one is randint rand uniform random normal and shuffle so in this we in this lecture you are going to learn all these techniques one is arrays arrange lin space zeros ones full i identity dag and empty so in the in the next class you are going to learn about what is a random module np dot random module now suppose how to create a numpy array with a range so already we have seen what is a range function in python so in python what is the range function in python suppose if you write range range of 10 in python it it generates the elements from sequence of elements from 0 to n minus 1 that means 0 to 9 it will be it will generate suppose you can use range in different ways so range 1 comma 25 suppose if i mention range 1 comma 25 that means uh, it generates uh, the list of elements the sequence of elements from from 1 to n minus 1 that means 25 minus 1 24 that means uh, 1 to 24 elements will be generated suppose if you want uh, if you want uh, from 1 to 101 you want all the all second elements that means every alternate element so that means uh, it generates from 1 to n minus 1 that means 100 every alternate value will be printed that means suppose one first one is printed next one three will be printed next five will be printed next seven will be printed next nine will be printed so on 
100 will be printed. That means uh, every alternate value will be printed. That means uh, here this is a begin. This is a begin. This is end. This is index step. What is your step value? Suppose if you don't mention anything, by default the step value is 1. If you mention the default step value is, if you don't, if you mention, you can mention any step value. This is uh, the range function which we are using in Python. In the similar fashion, in NumPy also, in NumPy, we have a range method a range method it is similarly like a, a range method in python so here if you write a range of suppose some integer so it gives the elements from 0 to n minus 1 that means 0 to 9 elements will be generated a range of suppose 5 comma 15 that means uh, this is a begin indexing this is an indexing if you mention only one integer the begin indexing always will be default 0 so 0 to n minus 1 will be generated in this case here you have mentioned 5 to 15 that means uh, 5 to 14 elements will be generated so in the case is you can apply the step operator a range 5 comma some 20 comma 2 that means uh, this is a begin indexing 5 2 this is an end indexing n minus 1 20 minus 1 it is 19 from 5 to 19 every alternate value will be printed because here you have used uh, the step operator as 2 that means uh, first 5 will be taken 7 will be next one 9 will be considered 11 will be considered because uh, the step operator is 2 so every alternate value will be printed so this is the way of using the numpy arrange method okay this also creates a numpy array okay now we will start with the the, ex, uh, the practical exp explanation with the arrange suppose import import numpy every time you have to import once when you have opened the uh, Jupyter notebook, you have to import the package numpy. Import numpy as np. Here I am creating an array a. That means an nd array a. How I am creating np dot a range. A range of uh, here I am mentioning that some 10 value. Now I am printing the value of a. So, how are, what is it printed? So, it has printed the values from a range of 10 means 0 to 10 minus 1, that means 9. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9 elements will be created. What is this? This is not a list. This is an nd array. This is an nd array. So, simply we have created an nd array without using the array method. So, if you want a sequence, if you want nd arrays, if you want to create an NDRS fastly and quickly, you have to go with the, this type of methods. So, a range method gives uh, in turn an NDRA within that range. Here, you have not mentioned any begin, so that the, the default begin will be 0 and will be 10 minus 1, that is 9. So, 0 to 9, it has printed the elements. Suppose, Suppose if you want to know whether it is a list or an ND array, simply write the type of A, then what is given? It is giving that it is a numpy array. That means a numpy dot ND array. So this is not a list, this is purely a ND array. Okay. Next, suppose B is equal to I am creating NP dot NP dot A range, NP dot A range of suppose I have written 10 comma 10 comma 1 comma 10 1 comma 10 now i am printing i am printing b print b what the values are printed 
So a range of you have mentioned the begin and also you have mentioned the end. So here this is what this one is begin. What is this? This is end. So now from begin to from begin to end minus 1. So what is begin? 1. What is end minus 1? 10 minus 1, 9. So from 1 to 9, all the elements will be printed. So 1 to 9, all the elements are printed. So what type of array it is? It is simply an ND array. Okay? This is simply an ND array. Suppose if you want uh, the type of uh, array, suppose if you print uh, the type of B, it is simply showing that uh, numpy dot ND array. Okay? So this is another way of creating numpy array using the A range. Again, NP dot A range of here I have mentioned 1 comma 101 comma 10. That means here I have mentioned the step operator. I want uh, the elements from 1 to 100 every 10th element I want. I want the every 10th element from 1 to 100. That means here I have mentioned 1 to 101. N minus 1 means 100. So 1 to 100 it prints every 10th element. Now print if you print C, what is printed? So 1, 11, 21, 31, 41, 51, like that, up to 91. That means every 10th element will be printed. First one is printed. After that, after 10 elements, 11 will be printed. After 11, the 10th element is 21. So like that, the elements are printed. Suppose if you, if you want to see the type of C, then what it is given is a number. If you want to see the size, S C dot size. We already explained these methods. Size. There are 10 elements in the given numpy array. Suppose if you want to know the shape, C dot shape. So the shape is, it is only one dimensional now. So that's why the shape is always 10. That means the number of elements. Suppose if you want to see the, the, uh, the dimension n dim. Now you just enter it. It is a one dimensional. So here the only one conclusion from uh, from a range function is always a range method creates an nd array of one dimension only always it creates an n dimensional an nd array of one dimension only you cannot create a multi dimensional array with a range suppose if you want to create a multi dimensional array either 2d or 3d you have to use some other method on nd np dot a range function so that it we can create you can create a n dimensional array suppose here here i have used np dot np dot a range a range of 1 comma 13 so 1 comma 13 means it creates a 1 to 12 elements so 1 to n minus 1 12 so 1 to 12 elements suppose if you apply reshape method reshape that means np dot a range method always creates a one dimensional array on that one dimensional array i want to reshape it i want to reshape it like a 3 comma 4 that means i want to make it a two dimensional array of size 3 by 4 that means three rows and four columns so now if you run this and if you print if you print the value of the so what it is printed it has printed a two dimensional array of size 3 by 4. Now that all the elements 1 to 12 are placed in the 2 dimensional array. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is the way of creating a num different shape that means different uh, 2 dimensional array and 3 dimensional array with the help of a reshape method. Okay. So np dot a range in that you are giving the range and uh, dot uh, reshape it is uh, reshaping that one dimensional array always np dot a range function will give method will give you one dimensional array only if you want to if you want to resize or reshape the one dimensional array you can use the method reshape 3 by 4 okay so reshape if you use the reshape definitely it will re it, it, the shape of the one dimensional array will be reshaped to the required size that means the required size is 3 by 4 so the it has given a two dimensional array of size 3 by 4 okay so here one thing we have to keep in mind that when you when you are applying the 
reshape when you are applying the reshape here you have mentioned 3 by 4 3 by 4 that means uh, you want to create a two dimensional layer of size uh, 3 by 4 so how many elements it requires 12 elements so this 12 elements shall be there in this a range function here a range is creating 1 to 12 elements so how many elements are there 12 so this 12 elements can be prepared or can be changed into the shape of 3 by 4 why because 3 by 4 requires 12 elements so you have 12 elements definitely you can create a, 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 a two dimensional array of size 3 by 4 suppose if i write 3 by 5 reshape of 3 by 4 that means here the a number of elements are 12 but the reshaping is the, 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 the you are you are requesting for to reshape of size 3 by 5 3 by 5 means 15 elements you require so you cannot uh, you cannot uh, convert uh, 12 elements into a two dimensional array of size 15 so here you will get an error you will get an error suppose if you see so here i am creating some uh, array e is equal to np dot a range of 1 comma 21 that means 20 elements are there dot re shape reshape of 4 5 comma some 6 comma 4 i want to reshape into a 6 comma 4 so how many elements the a range function is creating it is generating the elements from 1 to 20 n minus 1 that means 20 elements are there but you want to reshape the 20 elements into the shape of 6 by 4. 6 by 4 means 6 by 4 is a two dimensional array. So, how many elements it requires? 24 elements are required. But how many elements it is, it is generated? 12 elements it has generated. So, you cannot convert 12 element, 20 elements. Uh, the arrange, arrange method creates elements. 20 elements it is creating. So, 1 to 20. You cannot, you cannot convert 20 elements of one dimensional array into 24 elements of a two dimensional array by using the reshape method. So, here you will get the error. So, here what it is saying? What it is saying? Cannot reshape array of size 20 into of shape 6 by 4. 6 by 4 requires 24 elements, but you have 20 elements only, so that cannot reshape array of size 20 into shape 6 by 4, that is 24, okay. So, this is the way of creating the, this is the way of creating a ND array by using a range function. So, this is one method of creating the ND array. Okay. Then we will go with the next method. Next, another method of creating the NumPy array is lin space. Lin space. You have another method. The name of the method is lin space. Linearly spaced. That means, uh, if, if you want to create, suppose I have a number 10, 5 and I have a number 10. In between 5 to 10, I want to create uh, 7 equally spaced values from 7 to, from uh, 5 to 10. From 5 to 10, I want to create 7 equally spaced values. Okay. So, in such cases, uh, you can use a uh, link space method. Link space is a method which creates uh, linearly spaced values. Uh, it in the given range for the required number of value. Okay. Suppose here I am writing a is equal to a is equal to a is equal to np dot lin space of 1 comma 10 comma 5. That means from 1 to 10 I want 5 equally spaced values. Now print uh, A. Now you can see. So from, from 1 to lin space always gives uh, the elements are of type float. So from 1 to 10, how many values I want? 
फाइव इक्वली स्पेशल वैल्यूज दैट मींस द डिफरेंस बिटवीन वन टू थ्री पॉइंट टू फाइव इज सेम द डिफरेंस बिटवीन थ्री पॉइंट टू फाइव टू फाइव पॉइंट फाइव इज सेम द डिफरेंस बिटवीन फाइव पॉइंट फाइव टू सेवन पॉइंट सेवन फाइव इज सेम द डिफरेंस बिटवीन सेवन पॉइंट सेवन फाइव टू टेन इज डिफरेंस सो टोटल हाउ मेनी वैल्यूज वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव हियर this one is include this here this one is included and uh, this one is included both elements are included okay from 1 to 10 5 equally spaced values so these are the five equally spaced values uh, from the given range uh, 1 to 10 so this is the advantage of lin space okay so here it gives a uh, Five linearly spaced values. Suppose if you want to know what is the separation value, what is the difference between each value. See, there are all the values are separated equally. So from two, three point two five, three point two five to five point five, five point five to seven point five, seven point seven five, and seven point seven five ten. All are equally spaced. If you want to know that what with what difference the elements are separated, you can use like this also. Suppose a is equal to. I am writing the same. np dot lin space of lin space of 1 comma 10 comma you want five values here you can write the uh, syntax as end syntax as return ret step ret step if you if you keep return step is equal to true true then it returns uh, see here So what happens here? So as usually, you got the uh, five equally spaced elements. So one, three point two five, five point five, seven point seven five, and ten. But what is the area of separation? What is the difference between these two every two consecutive values? The difference between every two consecutive values is two point two five. That means all values are separated with a difference of two point two five. So you can see. That difference also by using an attribute red step return step value red step is equal if you put the uh, red step is equal true by default red step value will be in false state so if you put uh, true then it gives uh, the return step here there is a small syntax for uh, lint space suppose uh, here in this uh, Lin space we have the syntax will be like this lin space lin space begin end and by default uh, here you have an end point end point by default the end point will be true that means uh, it includes begin to end both begin and end will be included. If the end point is equal to false, then end won't be included. That means from begin to below end. That means end is not included. That means closed interval begin and open interval end. And if end point is equal to false, by default end point is equal to true. And also you can write R E T written step. Is equal to true. By default, it will be false. If you make it true, then it gives uh, what is the difference between two consecutive numbers which are linearly separated from begin to end. So this is the syntax of the link space. Okay. Suppose if I write a code, some b is equal to n p dot n p dot link space link space. Here I have written some b is equal to ten. Uh, begin is equal to ten and end is equal to so thirty. End point is equal to here I have mentioned end point is equal to false and uh, the difference uh, you are, you want to print uh, the difference also that's why R E T S T E P step is equal to true. Now I want to print uh, the value of B. I want to print the value of B. So here you can see here you can see because you have kept uh, the end point is equal to false. The end is not included. That means so you want to print uh, from ten to 
below 30. That means uh, open inter closed interval 10 and open interval 30. 30 is excluded. So here you can see from 10 to 29.6. So each value is difference. The each value has the difference 0 0.4. That means um, between every two value there is an equal separation of uh, 0 0.4. So here the begin is included and end is not included because here you have mentioned the end point is equal false. If it is mentioned is equal false, it will it won't, it won't include the last end point. Suppose if you if you, if you don't mention this by default end point is equal to true, that means from 10 to 30 will be included. Both the begin and end will be included. If it is false, your end will not be included. So here RET step is equal to true. By default it is false. If you make it true, then it gives uh, the difference also between the two numbers. Okay. Suppose sometimes so you want to create an array of uh, all zeros. You want to create an array of all zeros. So further, there is a special method is called as zeros. Suppose if you if we have c is equal to n p c is equal to n p dot. The method is z e r y s zeros of. Uh, suppose if I mention ten. That means the size. So here, if you print uh, the value of C, so it prints uh, 10. He prints 10 values in the array. That means the length of the array is 10. It is prints a one dimensional array of size 10 in which you have 10 zeros. In which you have 10 zeros. So always zeros method will give the result in the form of a float. In the form of float. So 0 point, 0 point, 0 point indicates that uh, it gives uh, an ND array of type float. Suppose if you want to know whether it is float or not, you just simply, you just simply write c dot d type, c dot d type. So, it gives float. If, if you, suppose if you have any uh, doubt that whether it is a numpy array or not, you simply write type of c, then it gives numpy dot nd array. So, simply I have created an array with complete number of zeros. Suppose sir, I do not want to uh, the output to be a float. I want to print the output to be of integer. You can simply write uh, c is equal to np dot zeros np dot zeros of uh, 10 np dot zeros of 10 comma. You simply write uh, d type is equal to within brackets you mention int 64. Then you print uh, you print c the you print c. Then it gives uh, an array an nd array of size 10 where all the elements are zeros where every element is an integer if you if you, if you want to if you want to know the type so d type c dot d type it gives an ndr of integers okay so if you don't mention any d type it gives by default by default data type is float if you mention the default if you mention d type is equal to some integer it gives a integer type okay Suppose if you want, it is only what one dimensional array. If you want to create two dimensional array of zeros, then you can write like this. So suppose d is equal to. Suppose if you want to create a zero array, you want to create an array of zeros of shape some two dimensional array or three dimensional array. Then means you have to mention the shape of the array. Here I am writing np dot zeros, np dot zeros, np dot zeros. Here I am mentioning the size. 3 by 4 that means I want uh, to uh, 3 by uh, 3 by 4 that means 2 dimensional array 3 rows and 4 columns 3 rows and 4 columns if you print uh, D if you print the it prints uh, what it has printed it has printed a 2 dimensional array so 3 rows and uh, 4 columns 3 rows and 4 columns but uh, the elements are of type float by default uh, the 0 the zero uh, array always gives uh, the elements are of type float this is a default. Suppose if you want, if you don't want uh, the default uh, values of uh, float, uh, then you can simply write uh, D type. D type is equal to, D type is equal to, here I have mentioned int some 32 bits, int 32 bit. Then you mention, so you can, if you, if you execute this, all the elements are printed. Now the array is of type integer. So it is not by default float. Here you have requested to print uh, all the elements in the form of an 
right suppose in the form of integer suppose if you write uh, d dot uh, d type uh, then you can see all the elements are of an integer so this is a way of creating an array filled with zeros of any shape in the previous case we have printed in the form of a one dimensional array in this case we have printed in the form of a two dimensional array suppose if you want a three dimensional array simply write e is equal to np dot zeros np dot zeros of within brackets suppose two comma three comma four so i want a two two dimensional three d array two by three by four that means two two dimensional arrays in every two dimensional array you have three one dimensional arrays in that you have four rows four columns okay now print print e so what happens it has created two dimensional array three dimensional array three dimensional array is nothing but a sequence of two dimensional arrays this is one two dimensional array this is another two dimensional array okay so here this is a three num three number of rows and four number of columns three number of rows and four number of columns so this is the way of creating an array and the array with complete zeros of any shape okay if you don't want if you don't want uh, the default uh, array type elements are float uh, then you can simply write d type is equal to if you write int uh, sub 64 then all the elements will be converted into an integer type of size int 64 okay so this is the another way of creating the numpy array suppose in in some uh, cases like machine learning in deep learning in some way you want uh, to create uh, an array with complete zeros then you, you are not required to type all the number of zeros simply by using the zeros method you can use uh, you can create uh, an array of an array with an array with the complete zeros of any shape okay similarly there is an another method to create uh, an array with only ones suppose here i have i am writing a is equal to np dot once o n e s once suppose if i write 10 what happens print print a then it prints an array an nd array of size 10 elements where every element is a one you want to print you want to create an nd array where all the elements are ones so by default it gives the elements are of type float if you want integer type you have you have to type you have to write it as d type is equal to integer so a is equal to suppose if you want a is equal to np dot np dot ones of 10 that means 10 elements that means 10 ones you want in the array all the elements are of type int 32 so now ones y n okay suppose if you print uh, it printed you have printed the array a that is a one dimensional array in which all the elements are of type integer and all the elements are ones okay suppose if you want to create uh, a two dimensional array with ones uh, then you just write simply b is equal to np dot ones np dot ones suppose i want the size as some three comma four three comma four I want to uh, what is called I want to declare the data type also as integer is equal to int 32 then I want to print b then you can see all the elements are converted uh, you have printed a two dimensional array in which all the elements are ones and uh, the element type is integer if you don't give the integer 32 by default it will be a floater suppose if you want three dimensional ones then np dot ones here I am mentioning some 3 comma 4 comma 5 and D type is equal to D type is equal to int 64 D type is equal int 64 then so you can see you can see so here you have created a 3 dimensional array in which you have 3 two dimensional arrays 
simply a three-dimensional array sequence of two-dimensional arrays. In every two-dimensional array, you have four rows and five columns. Four rows and five columns. Four rows and five columns. Okay. So this is the way of creating a ones matrix. That means an ND array with consisting of only ones. So this is only this is only applicable in the case of ones and zeros. If you want to create an array with zeros and if you want to create an array with ones. So this is not applicable for all the cases. If you want to create a, uh, an array with only twos, if you want to create an array with only tens, it's not possible. For that, there is a general method, common method is called as a common, common method is there, which is a full method. Suppose I want to create an ND array where all the elements shall be two. Suppose an NP is, A is equal to NP dot, the name of the method is full. The name of the method is full. So full, I want to create a one dimensional array of size 10. All the 10 elements shall be twos. So here I have to use the attribute fill underscore value is equal to, I want to print twos. Fill underscore value is equal to two. Now print, print A. So what is printed? It, is, it has printed an array in which all the elements are twos. So this is a way of creating your own array with the same value. So for zeros and ones only you have two different functions. But when it comes to the remaining elements, if you want to print, then you have to use the method called as full. Suppose b is equal to np dot full, np dot full. I want to create an array of size some three by four, three by four in which uh, all the elements in which all the elements shall be 7 so now fill underscore value in that array will be 7 now i am printing b if you print b so you can see all the elements are of type 7 so now zeros and ones methods only gives by default the values are of type float but when it comes to the full it gives uh, the values by default are of type integer. Okay. So, this is a way of filling an array with the required element. Okay. Across the array. Suppose if you want a three dimension array, c is equal to np dot, c is equal to np dot full, full, you just mention your array. Suppose 2, 3, 4. That means I want to create a three dimension array. D type in uh, D type is not required fill underscore value fill underscore value is equal to some 8 fill underscore value is equal 8 then print C so you can see it has printed the two dimensional array three dimensional array which is nothing but a sequence of two two dimensional arrays in which all the elements are filled with 8 so this is the way of creating an array an ND array in which all the elements are same. Okay. So for creating zeros, you have a zero method. For creating ones, you have a ones method. For creating any value, you have a another method called as full. Okay. Now there is another method to create a ND array. So that is I method. The method name is I method. The method name is I np dot i np dot i so what np dot i is doing doing it is creating an identity matrix it is creating identity matrix it creates an identity matrix so that means sir uh, it creates an identity matrix and also it returns it returns a 2d array 2d array with with ones on the diagonal on the diagonal and zeros elsewhere in the remaining cases it will fill the it will fill zeros and on the diagonal it will fill ones okay so i is a method to create an identity matrix and also it 
returns a two dimensional array in which the diagonal elements are filled with ones and the remaining elements are filled with zeros. So, this is the use of I method. We will do a practical example on I. Suppose, suppose here I am writing A is equal to NP dot I of 2 comma 2, 2 comma now I want to print, I want, I always return a two dimensional array, okay. So, by default I will return the two dimensional array. Here I have created an array, ND array of size 2 by 2 in which the diagonal elements are ones and the remaining elements are zeros. So, this is the use of an I function, okay. So, but an I, I function always gives uh, the values of type float. Suppose if you write, if you want to know the type of this, uh, suppose if you print uh, a dot, a dot d type, then it gives float, right? because the, the default uh, uh, values will be given in the form of a float, okay. Suppose b is equal to, b is equal to np dot i, suppose 3 by, uh, 5 by 9, 5 by 9. I is not uh, depends upon only the square matrix. You can create uh, a two dimensional array of any size. I am not, it, it should not be a square matrix. An if method will create a two dimensional array of any size. It is, it is, it need not be only the square matrix. So here the diagonal elements by default, the, here the diagonal element starts from here. So it is showing the diagonal elements are once in the remaining cases the diagonal elements are zeros okay suppose if you if you don't want the all the elements are of type float if you want to print uh, the elements are of type integer then simply here you write uh, 5 comma 9 comma d type d type is equal to int 64 int 64 then you execute it so here you can see it has printed an int matrix on which uh, the diagonal elements are ones uh, and all the elements are of type integer but not the default value float. So, it, I function will give us uh, the default elements are of type float but if you do not want. So, here uh, some logic is involved uh, by default uh, by default uh, the diagonal elements uh, the ones will be printed on this diagonal. Okay, but in some cases, if you want to shift the diagonal elements to this side, if you want the diagonal element to this side, if you want the diagonal elements to this side, you can shift by by changing the value of the k. Here, there is uh, one value that is called as k. Suppose if you if you don't mention anything, the k value is zero. Here, the k value is here the k value is zero. Here, the k value is one. This is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5, this is 6, this is 7, this is 8. Here the k value is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So, it depends upon the k value, your uh, diagonal will be changed. Here, if you do not mention anything, the default k value is 0. Suppose if I write b is equal to np dot, np dot i 5 comma 9. I, I here I am making k is equal to some 3. That means uh, I want to put uh, the diagonal element says this on which I want to create uh, ones. In this diagonal I want to print ones. Now you have to mention like this. Here you have to mention like this. Now I will show the example. You can see. B is some c is equal to np dot i suppose some 6 comma 10 comma k is equal to 3 comma d type is equal to d type is equal to int 64 instead of uh, printing the float values i am printing integer values now print uh, print c 
now you can see where the l where, where it has taken that diagonal diagonal has taken at this place now you can see you can see these elements are ones and the remaining elements are zeros now this is your diagonal this is your diagonal so why the diagonal is shifted here you have mentioned the value of k is equal to 3 here initially the value of k is equal to 0 here this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 so now these elements becomes 1 sir, and the remaining rest of the elements becomes 0 in the given array suppose if I want to print uh, 1 on this diagonal now this will be minus 1 the value of k is equal to minus 1 here here the value of k is equal to minus 2 here the value of k is equal to minus 3 here the value of k is equal to minus 4 here the value of k is equal to minus 5 so if you want to print once on this uh, diagonal you have to put the value of k is equal to minus 2 so now here i will write uh, the value of k is equal to minus 2 now you execute this now you can see this is the diagonal this is the diagonal okay so this is the way of using the i function i won't give always a square matrix you can keep any shape but it always gives a two-dimensional array if you don't mention the data type the default data type will be float if you mention the data type the data type will be printed okay now another method is identity matrix Next one is identity method. NP dot identity identity method. So what it is giving? It always it it is always a square matrix. It is always a square matrix. That means the number of rows and number of columns are same. Only the main diagonal contains ones. The remaining elements are zeros. Okay. Here there is no considerations. Always it is a square matrix and uh, the diagonal elements only, the main diagonal elements only contains ones. In remaining cases, the remaining elements are zeros okay suppose if you write an example a is equal to np dot identity i want of size 5 comma and i want to print i want to print I don't mention any data type, you will see what happens. Now print print A. So in here it has printed an array, a square array, an ND array of size 5 by 5, in which the main diagonal elements are ones. Remaining are all are zeros okay so this is what is called int function suppose if you want if you don't want to see the default values in the form of a float then you mention your own data type d type is equal to d type is equal to int int 64 int 64 then the elements are of type integer okay suppose if you want to see the elements are of type boolean then you can print for fun like this np dot identity np dot identity i want to create a matrix of size 10 that means uh, it is a square matrix of size 10 by 10 and here i am giving d type is equal to here i am giving d type is equal to bool i want to see i want to print uh, the boolean array so now print b print b it gives uh, an array a boolean array in which the diagonal elements are where the on the diagonal elements the elements are ones in the many cases the elements are zeros so all non-zero numbers will be treated as 
true. All non-zero number will be treated as true. Here yes, you can see the diagonal elements are ones only, but instead of ones, we have printed true. So this is your diagonal element. Maybe because you want to see the result in the form of a boolean boolean array. Now that in the many cases all the elements are false. So this is a way of creating your own int array with your own data type. Another method of creating ND array is by using diag. By using diag. So diag is a method in which you can you can extract a diagonal or a construct a diagonal array. Suppose if we give an array, if you want to extract the diagonal from the array, it will give it will extract the diagonal array. Or if you give a if you give a diagonal and it will create an array. So if you provide a two-dimensional array, then it will extract the elements at the kth diagonal. If you provide a one-dimensional array, it will construct a diagonal array with the provided elements and the remaining elements will be filled with zeros. Okay. So here what DAG is DAG method is doing, if you provide a two-dimensional array, it gives the diagonal of the two-dimensional array. Suppose if you provide a one-dimensional array, it gives a, it, it creates a two-dimensional array with the provided one with the provided one dimensional on the diagonal. Okay. If you provide one dimensional array, it will construct a diagonal array with the provided elements on the diagonal and the remaining elements will be filled with zeros. Okay. So here I will explain with an example. Suppose here I am creating an array a is equal to nb dot nb dot a range a range of 1 comma 10 dot reshape reshape of 3 by 3. So if you want to print a what is this? This is a two dimensional array of size 3 by 3. Suppose if you print this is a 3 by 3. Now what I will do here I will write np dot np dot diag of here I am supplying the two dimensional array and I want to extract the elements on the diagonal k is equal to 0. Now you can see so 1 5 9 that means uh, I want to extract uh, this diagonal elements I want to extract this diagonal elements here I have extracted these diagonal elements. Suppose if you want to print uh, these diagonal elements, you have to mention the k is equal to 1. k is equal to 1. Suppose if I write like this, np dot, np dot, here I am extracting diag, np dot, diag of a, a comma k is equal to, k is equal to 1. So what elements will be printed? 2 and 6. What are 2 and 6? So, on uh, the diagonal, this is k is equal to 0. This is k is equal to 1. On this diagonal, what are the elements are there? 2 and 6. So, 2 and the diagonal elements are printed. So, one thing you have to understand that for the diagonal, for the diag method, if you provide a two-dimensional array, then it extracts the required diagonal. Or suppose if you provide a one-dimensional array, it creates a two-dimensional array with the given diagonal and the remaining elements are filled with zeros. We will see that also. Suppose I have a one-dimensional array. I have a one-dimensional array. A is equal to A is equal to some 2, comma, 3, comma, 4, comma, 4, comma, 5. So this is my one-dimensional array. So now what I am doing is NP dot diag np dot diag of a here i am providing one dimensional array k is equal to k is equal to 0 k is equal to 0 so what happens it has created a two dimensional array it has created a two dimensional array with the given array as a diagonal element here this array represented here as a diagonal element and the remaining elements are filled with zeros so this is the advantage of this is the usage of diagonal. Suppose 
if you write here suppose if you write np dot diag of a comma some k is equal to 1 k is equal to 1 that means this is the next diagonal now you can see so it creates a, an array of size 5 by 5 in which a, the, uh, the diagonal elements are 2 3 4 5 at the index k is equal to 1 at k is equal to 1 this is the this is the diagonal the index of the diagonal is k is equal to 1 at k is equal to 1 it has placed the elements and the remaining elements are filled with zeros so this is the the way of creating a numpy array so in this entire lecture we have seen various ways of creating the numpy arrays so there, there is only you don't think that there is only one method to create the numpy arrays array method so except array method there are very efficient methods are there in which you can quickly create a, a numpy array of required size and required shape and required base okay and next uh, another way of creating the numpy array is by using a method called as empty empty e m p t y so what empty is doing empty it return when you use empty it return a new array a new array of given given shape and type without without initializing entries that means it gives an empty array an empty array means you don't think that you, nothing will be there it, it initializes an array but some default some dummy values will be placed so those values are not important some dummy values will be created of given size and given type suppose if you want to create a numpy array with n np np dot emp t y empty here i have mentioned a shape 3 by 3 here i mentioned a shape 3 by 3 so you can see so this is an empty array suppose if you see the uh, suppose here i have created some a is equal to np dot empty now i want to print i want to print a so it is created some a default array in which some dummy values are there, some uh, some garbage values are there, but it will be treated as an empty. Okay. Suppose if you see a dot size, so you can see the size is seven by seven. That means you have created an empty array of size nine. Okay. Suppose if you want to see the data type, D type. So, what, what is given? Float. By default, it is given the data type as float. So, but those values have no importance. Those values you are not, they are not required to consider. So, just it is initialized some, uh, some unnecessary data. But the, that the data is empty. Suppose if you write, uh, if you print np dot, np dot empty of 10, that means uh, it creates a one dimensional array. It creates a one dimensional array with some dummy data. Okay. So this is a way of creating where this is the these are the various ways of creating the numpy arrays. So in the next class, I will explain only the exclusive random np dot random module in which you have several uh, methods through those methods with the help of those methods you can create uh, uh, nd arrays in different ways. So here we have discussed the uh, a range function, lin space, zeros, ones full method, i method, identity method, empty method, so diagonal method, so these are the different methods we have discussed, so these are the different ways of creating the numpy arrays, okay, I hope everybody have gone through my video and understand, okay, you please, while you are listening the video, you have to practice, or after listening the video, you just practice, then you can get more knowledge, okay. Hands-on experience is required. Definitely, these concepts will be useful in your machine learning and deep learning and natural language crossing. 
mainly the main use of uh, NumPy and Pandas is data manipulation and data analysis. So for the data analysis and data manipulation, definitely you require these main two libraries NumPy and Pandas. Okay. After listening to the video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Learn with Lekhnani. Thank you. Thank you one and all.